Scarlet Moon Creations and I'm back with another video for the YouTube Pagans Challenge and um, this year's challenge we're using the hashtag YTPagansABC because the videos we do for the challenge in 2018 uh, should follow the letters of the alphabet, the English alphabet. And um, I did letter A already, affirmation, so go check that video out. And today I'm doing letter B, and for B I'm doing bath magic, which makes a whole lot of sense since um, that's a lot of what I sell and enjoy making. Somehow, um, in the 10 plus or something like that years I've been into paganism and witchcraft, I have gravitated towards um, making things for bath time. And I don't, I, I mean, I know how it happened, but I don't really understand why. I just know I enjoy it. So this is something close to my heart and something I like. Uh, so before we get into like what is bath magic, I just want to talk about really quickly um, baths for ritual and um, sacred purposes. So we all know what a bath is. Um, it's about cleaning your body. It's supposed to be um, cleaning up the dirt, the sweat, the grime, and... Um, this, uh, the dead skin cells from that you've collected during the day or however long, um, a time period. And for s centuries, really, we as human beings have been doing this. All animals do it in some way, shape, or form. But uh, as human beings, we found that water really is the best way to go and some sort of cleansing agent to help out. Um, and sacred bathing ritual baths take that a step further, no matter what, uh, the religion or spiritual practice, the point is for cleansing as well, cleansing, purification, consecration, and focus, and what, mm, excuse me, the... Cleansing is not just of the physical, um, it's, you know, cleansing your mind, cleansing your spirit, purifying your mind and spirit, as well as your body. Um, you know, ritual baths are often um, taken as far as witches and specifically Wicca goes, you take them before you do some uh, ritual and or you enter the sacred sa sacred space or sacred circle and that is um, honestly that mimics what the rest of the world religions and spiritual practices do there's all types of spiritual cleansing and purifying preparing yourself mentally physically and emotionally and spiritually for entering a sacred space or for um, preparing yourself to do a ritual and also it helps your focus like to you're leaving the mundane world and you're entering a spiritual place or a spiritual world and that is great it's honestly ritual baths sacred bathing of um, all types are usually you know, to prepare you for something else. They're the gateway, they're the ritual before the ritual, the preparation before the ritual. And uh, I think pretty awesome. But as we all know, um, one of the primary um, elements of bath is water. And the element of water has long been known as I said earlier in the video, to help with cleansing the body, both f physically, uh, but it has um, some other
uh, associations that have been picked up along the way and uh, I'll just list a couple so um, I think this ties into having creating your own ritual bath or doing bath magic if the the main element because if you're in a tub of water the main element you're dealing with the majority is water and our bodies are made of 70% water so um, it's definitely the majority so some associations with water uh, it usually uh, represents the emotions how we feel about things relationships um, in tarot the suit of cups and um, representing creation life-giving the subconscious and the unconscious uh, divination and scrying I think water scrying with a bowl of water but also just um, kind of like psychic power and knowing because that connects with the subconscious and unconscious um, the unknown depths like because quite literally in the oceans of the world um, that's as far as modern man and science goes that's the place on this those are the only places on this planet where we have so little knowledge because we can't we haven't figured out how to survive down there long enough to learn more so they're the unknown depth the unknown uh, the unplumbed depths at that um, water is represented represents cycles like the tides and um, the menstrual cycle the cycle of life um, again human beings us being 70% water um, the moon again there's a close relationship with the moon because the moon affects the tides of the waters um, and for uh, many pagans in Europe, if you do a uh, ritual or ceremonial magic um, and you focus on the directions, uh, like a, the compass directions, water usually is um, symbolic with the west. I'm in New York City, that's always been a little bit weird for me because I'm on the east coast of the United States, so the biggest body of water, the Atlantic Ocean, is actually to my east. So, but that's, you know, whatever works for you. And of course, water is represented by ritual bathing, and it's a form of water magic. Um, ritual bathing and bath magic is a form of water magic. Personally, I'm going to take a break from reciting to uh, give you some background on me. Um, like I said, I'm here in New York City. I absolutely love beaches for me they're like a major crossroads you get all four elements at the same time the water meaning the sand and the earth the air the open air around you uh, which is it's often windy because there's no buildings blocking it um, there's no uh, natural um, things like mountains or hills or anything blocking the wind from going where it will um, over the water and the beach but also usually um, the sun is out as well which is for me the representation of fire um, so yeah I love the beach it's it's like you go I go there and I just feel completely energized but um, there is also the fact that it's not easy to get to the beach as close as we are to the water here in New York City it's a pain to get to the beach so um, bath having baths is a thing that I kind of like to bring the water the ocean to me so um, let's talk about doo -doo -doo. All right, what I've talked about so far has been ritual bath, something you do before the ritual. You're purifying, cleansing yourself before you do your ritual. Well, how about we throw that out and just, why don't we just make the bath, the ritual in and of itself? Is that too hard? I don't think so. 
I can't take a bath every single day. I live with other people. That's understandable. And the tub is not always clean because life. But I think it is, it's something that I can do every week or every two weeks. And um, it's definitely something I can do once a month, like on a full moon or on a new moon or um, eight times a year for the eight sabbats. Something like that. Or, you know, just for special holiday occasions. Ooh, excuse me. Not a problem. But if I have some extra magical things I want to do, I will jump in the bath and let everybody know to give me some space for 15 or 20 minutes. And it's good. It's physically healthy. Um, it's relaxing. But that's going to be a whole other video. We're just talking about the spiritual aspects of it. And, um, I think to teach you or to explain how you can make the, the bath your ritual, how you can do bath magic, and they're not one and the same. You do not need a ritual to do bath magic, and you don't have to do bath magic every time you do a bath, a ritual bath. <sighs> I was trying really hard not to like trip over saying that. So for bath magic, it's honestly the only difference to me is the fact that you're in a bathtub with a whole bunch of water. So you prepare your bathtub, you want to cleanse it mundanely, and if you so choose, clean it um, spiritually. Um, there's plenty of ways... Um, to cleanse. I mean, if you would like, you can smudge your bathtub or your entire bathroom or some other type of smoke cleansing. Um, there's also, uh, I've got this, I just saw it over my shoulder, the Thieves Room Spray. I've also got, um, a couple of sacred sprays that I tried from other, um, Etsy sellers that are great for, you know, cleansing the space, cleansing the energies in the air. Um, and whatever else you do to cleanse, break out some crystals and have them sit and suck up the negative energy that might have been sitting in the bathroom. Um, have some uh, incense or uh, oil warming or diffusing in your bathroom to, you know, cleanse the air again um whatever you do cleanse your bathroom and both physically and spiritually and then prepare your water um you want to get it hot enough that the heat will last during the bath because nobody likes sitting in a cold water bath it's unnecessary if you're in a a place in your life in, in a place in the world where you can get a hot bath or a warm bath, go for it. Unless that's the purpose of your bath ritual or your bath magic, then who am I to tell you no? It's it's not my thing. Um, so then you want to you want to think about ahead of time the purpose of your bath ritual. Whether you're having a bath ritual or you having um, are you just doing bath magic and um, collect your ingredients. So ingredients you can include, obviously, same as regular rituals, herbs, flowers, roots, and resins for baths, um, oils and salts, uh, bath salts, I mean, like bath oils or bath salts, that's another uh, ingredient that you, those are other ingredients you can include. Um, if you're going full on ritual, you might want to include crystals, um, and candles, uh, or just for ambiance while you have your magic, um, pick, just have it all out there. And, um, you know, if, if you're going to do magic or spell work, or if it's a ritual that, where you're going to be saying things, you want to prepare your words ahead of time and keep them in a place where they won't get wet, um, before you get in the bathtub. And... Yeah, prepare your mind to be, this is a ritual space, or this is a magical space, this is a sacred space, so this is not a regular bath, I'm not just in here to clean myself, 
Um, in fact, you probably don't want to do that. If you need to clean yourself ahead of time, then do so. This bath is for spiritual purposes only. So that's where your focus should be. Now, I'm not saying you cannot use cleaning or cleansing um, as a magical act during the spiritual bath, during your math, uh, ritual bath, but you, 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 this is still a time of focusing on your intent and it's not the same thing is, is what I'm saying. So, um, let's see. Do, do, do. You want to pick out the ingredients out of the stuff that some of the things that I've mentioned or more. Um, and like I mentioned earlier, I like to um, do uh, ritual baths or bath magic to kind of bring the feeling of being at the beach home. Um, so I have some beachy things. This uh, candle is a refreshing seashore. And it's kind of old, renews it. I don't use it that much, but it, it does smell like a refreshing seashore. And I've got some seashells. Sand dollar. Here. Let me focus. And I kind of put those around. I've also got pieces of driftwood and sand from some other beaches I've been to and I just kind of put them around the edges of the tub where I know I won't bump into them with my elbows or knees or my heels because I am a tall woman. My tub is not tiny but it's, we want to be safe. Um, and. Yeah, I sometimes I might put some sea water that I, I have, again, from the beach into my bath. Not a whole lot. I didn't collect a bathtub full, but enough. And, um, it's, it all creates the ambiance. These are all things that help you me focus. And by focus, I mean focus on the intent of the magic I'm going to create um, just for me a lot of the time the energy I put into setting up the tub and um, creating the bath oil or the bath salts for this uh, magical ritual is the energy that goes into the spell work that I'm creating um, and I may say what I have to say um, and then that's it. Let the energy embody everything and let it go. If you would like to create movement, that's fine. Um, for something like a releasing bath, um, kind of letting the tub empty out is really great. Um, there's using bath oils, um, with the intent for like protection, Bath oils, the way they work is um, you use essential oils um, and maybe some um, uh, and base oil and you sprinkle it in on the tub. And oil and water don't really mix, so you have to like mix it with your hand a little bit. And when you get in, you know, you'll smell the fragrance, the heat of the water will um, spread the scent of the essential oils through the air. But then when you get out of the bath, the oils will coat your skin. And this is great for moisturizing, by the way. Again, another video. But um, it will coat your skin. So that's a great use for bath oils when it comes to protection. And... Um, Body scrubs are great um, if you want to remove something. So you can use uh, salts like uh, sea salt um, or body salt. Uh, you can also use sugar scrubs if that's what you want to do. That's fine. You can put some herbs or essential oils or both. Base oil. Um, just the thing is, the reason for base oils is because essential oils can um, burn the skin. Some are really not great for those with sensitive skin, and even those without sensitive skin. Um, 
they can be toxic so you want to mix them with a base oil just to protect yourself um and you mix all of that together in a bath salt before your ritual with the intent let's say to scrub away negativity or to remove um um that which doesn't serve you anymore and um you're physically scrubbing it from your body and uh that is a good way of raising energy and having movement to represent the intent of your bath magic. And I'm trying to think, there's also uh, some glamour magic if you want to put on a kind of feeling like courage. Maybe I'll put together a bath tea um, that is Basically, um, usually for me, they're herbal teas, so I'm using the same herbs I would use for anything else. Put them in a little muslin bag or a um, tea bag. They have tea bags where you can make your own tea and then like iron it close, which is so cool. And um, you just dump that in the bath while you're there, so you're marinating. <laughs> you're soaking up the energy from those herbs. And um, you can also put crystals and stones in there as well. Um, just be careful. Know what crystals you're going to be using. Um, and if they're okay to be in water. To be in salt water. Because um, if you put salt in your bath. I mean, bath salts in your bath. Now it's salt water. Um, and hot water. Just be careful because some crystals can dissolve in um, any of those circumstances. So, um, you put them in a little bag, drop it in your tub, and then you're soaking in the energy of that bath sachet or bath tea. Um, let's see, uh, we talked about body scrubs, bath salts, also similar to the bath teas, like I talked about earlier, you sprinkle it in the tub, mix it up. Um, hand, mixing it with your hand is just fine, um, to kind of, as a, as a s symbolic gesture of, um, energy work, and, um, it's very similar to me to, you know, dancing around the altar or walking around the altar and raising that, that, that cone of power in a way, um, and all of this, um, for celebratory purposes, you can, um, pick things that work for certain gods or goddesses. Um, you can bring those gods, uh, and goddesses into your bathroom with you. Um, this is now your sacred space, so there's nothing wrong with them being in the bathroom. Um, and you can pick herbs and oils and, uh, incense and, and candles and crystals, whatever else you use in your rituals outside bath, um, in the bathroom with you as long as you have the counter space to put things or if you feel comfortable enough, they can be on the floor. Um, I personally don't have a problem with that and I would never shame anybody who did so. Um, trying to think, uh, that leads me to the idea of having bathroom altars. So, this is a really cool idea if you want to do these kind of bath magic or bathroom rituals on a regular basis. Um, or if the things you do in the bathroom, you want to make them sacred. Um, other than removing waste and cleansing ourselves, we do a lot of things in the bathroom. Um, there's a mirror on there, we do our hair, we um, take care of our skin and our body our bodies and our looks in the bathroom a lot of times. For me, the only mirror in my house is in the bathroom. I don't use it very much, but when I do, it's like, it's a thing. I'm going there, honestly, I check the mirror before I leave the house. That's pretty much it. It's like, okay, I don't look like a crazy person. Every I'm all put together. Okay, good. And if there's um, some magical intent I have for that day, maybe I need a little bit more courage because I'm going for a job interview. Um, I have a little altar in the corner on the on the sink or maybe in the corner by of, of the tub 
set up for courage at that time. You know, light a little incense or maybe um, I have a little um, of my courage bath oil left over and I'll anoint myself and it's just like, you got this girl, you got this, right? So, um, or, you know, every t I want um, using the bathroom and I mean that in the, more than just using the toilet. Every time I use it to become a sacred thing, um, like in a practical magic kind of way, I want my bathroom to become a sacred space so I'll have things that I find to be sacred as um, representatives to help fill that space with the sacred energy to remind me every time I go in there that my home, every nook and cranny is a sacred space. So you can have a bathroom altar, whatever, however much space you have, you can use it the way you use a regular altar. Um, the same with a shrine, though I will um, stop there because I don't really know um, what kind of shrine uh, would be appropriate for the bathroom or inappropriate for that matter. I just don't, I don't know very much about uh, creating shrines for the bathroom. Um, you can bring images of certain deities uh, or uh, like statuettes and things. Again, be aware of the materials of the things you're using. Bathrooms are usually very humid uh, places because of their structure. Um, so you do, even if it's, even if everything is set up far away from the tub and the sink and the toilet, um, just, you know, the steam from showers linger often, um, or the steams from baths and you don't want your stuff to be damaged unless you like that kind of thing. Um, this is where, uh, kind of beachy sea, um, related items would be good. So maybe instead of using crystals, you use river stones. Um, or, uh, like I mentioned earlier, some uh, shells and things that you know can hold up to um, water. And at this point, um, I'm done. Well, thank you for watching. And um, if you would like to buy a body scrub or bath salts or ritual oils, massage oils, bath oils, that kind of thing, any kind of bath magic, you can find the link to my shop, Scarlet Moon Creations, in the description down below. Thanks again for watching. Bye.